than Trump. It was, they couldn't believe it. The worst of them, CNN, MSNBC, which is, which is worse than, I, I think I have a new, MSNBC, third rate, and NBC, which is horrible. Their newscast, by the way, is not doing well on NBC Network. They're heading down the tubes. But, but listen to this. I did The Apprentice on NBC for 14 seasons. I made a lot of money for them. We had a big, successful show. Arnold Schwarzenegger failed when he did The Apprentice, and he's a movie star. Martha Stewart failed when she did The Apprentice, and I just kept chugging along. Every year it was a big hit. I mean, I did The Apprentice, made them a lot of money, gave them good ratings when they were absolutely dying, and they do nothing but kill me. NBC is perhaps worse than CNN, I have to tell you. And MSNBC is horrible. So here they are, they're outside, these wonderful representatives, very high level from South Korea, are saying all of these things, denuke, and all of the things that they can't believe because it's like five years ahead of schedule. Before this, they would say, well, that will never happen, and this will never happen, and you'll never get them to stop, you know, with the missiles. They're saying all of this. Now they say they want to stop the missiles, they want to denuclearize, they want to do all of these things, and all of these people are like, they can't believe it. It's unbelievable. I said to my wife, I said, you know, it's amazing. They're really nice tonight. It's really amazing. They're all saying, this is an incredible achievement. This is, okay. Then I get up in the morning. Some time goes by. <laughs> right? Same people, they're saying, not that big a deal. Anybody could have done it. Obama could have done it. Obama had a chance. No, no. They're saying, Obama, Obama. Obama was driving you down. You take a look at those numbers before we took over. They were heading down. So, so just let me say, so I wake up, so it's so nice, and I'm looking forward to watching in the morning. And I go, I mean, literally, they're saying, well, Clinton could have met. Clinton gave away the house. I got nothing. And Bush, Bush, Bush. Another great Republican. He got us into the Middle East. That was a great, we spent seven trillion dollars in the Middle East over a 17 year period. Seven trillion dollars as of three months ago. Okay? We, you know what they did? That was like taking a big stone and throwing it into a hornet's nest. But we're bringing it back. ISIS, we have 98% of the caliphate of the land back. 98. So I woke up and I saw all these reports that, uh, you know, anybody could have done it. Oh, yeah, sure. Anybody could have gotten President Xi, President for Life. That was another one. So he's President for Life. It happened two days ago. And I was joking. I was at a, uh, a roast, actually. But I was joking and I said, huh, President for Life, that sounds good. Maybe we're going to have to try it. Maybe we're gonna... President for Life. But I'm joking. But I'm joking. And they knew I was, everybody in the room's laughing. Everybody's having a great time. I'm joking about being president for life. A couple of them went back. Donald Trump, with his dictatorial attitude, now wants to be president for life. You know, straight. Fake news. Fake. Fake. Horrible. But you know what's going to happen? I, did you see the other day? 96% of what they do, all I do is good stuff. The economy is the best it's ever been. Your coal, by the way, folks, some of you are in the coal world. Your coal is coming back big, 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 big. Your steel is coming back. Your steel is coming back. Those plants are going to be opening. And what we've done with the 25% tariffs for those guys that come in and dump their steel all over the place. And by the way, it's not good steel. You guys know what I mean. It's crap. But your steel is coming back. It's all coming back. And six months prior to the election in 2020, every one of those guys, we really endorse 
Donald Trump. We think he has to win. You know why? Because if I don't win the election, their ratings are going to go so far down, they're going to be out of business, every one of them. Can you imagine? Can you imagine covering Bernie or Pocahontas? Pocahontas. How about that? Pocahontas. Can you imagine these guys? Some of them are actually smiling, but some of them just can't stand it, honestly. Some of them, they can't take it. Can you imagine having to cover Elizabeth Warren for four years? You know, I was watching during the campaign, and Hillary was sitting right there, and Pocahontas was up, and she was so angry. Look, we love each other, the women, the men. We love each other. Everybody loves she was so angry. I said, you know, I think she's losing the entire male audience and many of the women. She was going at it and Hillary's sitting there saying, oh my God, what did I do here? This is... <laughs> but can you imagine if they had to cover some of these people that are running? I think any of them, to be honest with you. I think any of them. Oh, I'd love Oprah to win. I'd love to beat Oprah. I know her weakness. No, no, I know her weakness. I, I know her, you know, I know her very well. I was on her last show, or one of the last, I guess the last week. She had Donald Trump and Donald Trump's family. My, 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 we've come down a long way, haven't we? I'm now president and probably, you know, but, but think of it. I know her weakness. Wouldn't we love to run against Oprah? I would love it. I would love it. That would be a painful experience for her. So we've created three million, thank you, darling. Oh, they're positive. I thought they were negative. They're positive. That's always the problem. We have a room that's packed. If we have one person, and that's actually a fan. By the way, that's a fan over there. But if we have one person that speaks, it's like a big deal the next day. So, we've created three million jobs since Election Day. Nobody thought that was possible. We've passed the largest tax cuts and reform in American history. We've created more than 300,000 new jobs alone last month. And you saw the numbers yesterday. Yesterday's numbers, job reports, was among the best numbers ever produced in the history of our country. In the history of our country. In fact, my guys... In fact, my guys came into my office and they gave me the number, because if you add the previous month, which was adjusted upward by 52,000 jobs, they were low last month. It adjusted upward. So we're like over 360,000 jobs. And I said, let me ask you, is that a mistake? I don't think I've ever seen, you know, if you get 160, it's good. We were at 360. So I looked at my guys, I said, is that a typographical error? What is that? But you saw it, it was one of the best reports. And you know the amazing thing? Wages went up a little bit. You haven't had wages in 19 years. Wages are starting to go up. Think of it. Wages. I mean, how good is that? Wages starting to go up. African-American unemployment has reached the lowest level in history. The lowest. You know, African American, and I'm very proud of that, African American unemployment two months ago reached the lowest level in history. And then last month it went up a little bit, right? And I made the mistake because I didn't know it went up. And it wasn't quite as good, but it wasn't historic. So I was in a different month and I said, African unemployment is the lowest level in history. They killed me because it was the previous month. But here's the good news. The new month brought it down to the lowest level. So now it's the lowest level. Hispanic unemployment is the lowest level. Think of that. 
Hispanic unemployment is the lowest level in history. Women, women, we love you. We love you. Hey, didn't we surprise them with women during the election? Remember? Women won't like Donald Trump. I said, have I really had that kind of a problem? I don't think so. But women won't like Donald Trump. It will be a rough night for Donald Trump because the women won't come out. We got 52%, right? 52, right? And I'm running against a woman. You know, it's not that easy. 155 million people are now employed. That is, came out this morning, that is the highest level of employment in the history of our country. 155 million. Think of that. While the Obama administration in its final year was losing 1,000 manufacturing jobs a month, we've created almost 300,000 new manufacturing jobs. Think of that. Think of that. The task for all of us, for everyone here tonight, is to make sure that this great American comeback continues full speed ahead. We are doing things that are amazing. You know, make America great again, right? Make America great again, right? So you know what the new slogan is going to be? I, I, I won't tell you. We've got to keep it secret, except did you ever see so much press? Wow. You know what the new slogan will be? Because I can't use it in three years from now. I can't say, very good. I can't use it. I can't go like in four years and say, here's my slogan, which is now two and a half years we'll have to start thinking, right? It's getting close. We can't say, make America great again, because I already did that, right? Right? So, right? So our, not my slogan, our slogan, this is a team, our new slogan will be, and you know, this is on the assumption it happens, which I'm almost positive. Can never be 100% sure. I never like to go too far in advance, but let's assume it's going like it's going. By the way, if we coasted for two and a half years, we did a hell of a job. You know that. In fact, I was telling some of the guys, let's just coast. Because the stock market is up almost 40% since Election Day. Think of it. Almost 40%. Think of it. And by the way, that's not rich people. That's for everybody. I mean, you have your 401ks, which are up 42%, 38%. I tell it all the time. I, I take pictures back with the policemen. I love the policemen. I love the firemen. They're great. Right? And they're always coming up and saying, sir, thank you very much. My 401k is up 41%. My wife thinks I'm a genius. They think like they're great investors, okay? But they're up way, way up, and that's good. That's really good. That's what we want. That's what we want. That's what we have to have. We're so proud of this country. But our new slogan, when we start running in, can you believe it, two years from now, is going to be, keep America great, exclamation point. Keep America great. But we can only do that if we elect people who are going to back our agenda and fight for our values. And that is why we have to defeat Nancy Pelosi And Maxine Waters, a very low IQ individual. You ever see her? Do you ever see her? Do you ever see her? We will impeach him. We will impeach the press. But he hasn't done anything wrong. It doesn't matter. We will impeach him. She's a low IQ individual. You can't help her. She really is. We will impeach him.
But you have Maxine Waters, and you have plenty of others. And, I mean, Nancy Pelosi, you can't have that. And Connor Lamb, Lamb the Sham, right? Lamb the Sham. He's trying to act like a Republican, so he gets, he won't give me one vote. Look, I don't know him, looks like a nice guy. I hear he's nice looking, I think I'm better looking than him. I do, I do, I do. And he's slightly younger than me, slightly. No, I heard that, then I saw, he's, he's okay, he's all right. Personally, I like Rick Saccone, I think he's handsome. And you did a great job on television today. I watched you, Rick. That was a great interview. That was a great interview. I appreciate it, too. But he's really good. Here's the thing. We're dealing with people that want to obstruct. They want to stop us from doing things. We put an infrastructure bill in for $1.7 billion, and I hear they want to stop it. They want to stop DACA. DACA is their issue. But I'm willing to go along. Get it done. We've got to get it done, right? Get it done. And besides that, you know, honestly, we need good, great workers in our country because I'm bringing a lot of companies into this country. We're not going to have workers for it. We have to bring them in. But DACA, they're here. They're good people. And the Democrats are trying to not do so. I offered a deal that was so good you can't refuse, right? Like the mob pictures. I give you a deal that's so good you can't refuse. I made a deal, I, I gave them a deal so good they could not refuse. And I did it because I thought they were going to refuse. And they did. And they're getting killed now by the DACA recipients. They're getting killed. But somebody like Lamb, he's never going to vote for us. He's now saying, and I appreciate his nice words about me. This is Trump country, right? So he has to say nice. Okay, he's smart. So he's saying nice things. Here's the problem. As soon as he gets in, he's not going to vote for us. He's going to vote the party line. He has to. And if he doesn't, he's never going to a chairman of a committee. He's, you know, it's a whole crazy system. But he's going to vote the party line. He doesn't care about us. But for getting your votes, he's talking about how much he likes tariffs, which is my baby. And I took a lot of heat over that. But let me tell you, all these countries now are calling up. We don't want the tariffs. What do we have to do? European Union. They kill us. Sounds good. A lot of us came from the European Union, different countries, right? Sounds nice, they kill us on trade. So we put on tariffs, and the European Union's out there, well, we're going to put on. I said, you can't go any higher than you are anyway. <laughs> and they have trade barriers. We can't even sell our farming goods in there. They totally restrict us. So then they say, we want those tariffs taken off. I said, good, open up the barriers and get rid of your tariffs. And if you don't do that, we're going to tax Mercedes-Benz. We're going to tax BMW. You want to have money? You want to have money come into our country? And you know, the cars are really the big item. That's the big money item. So when I said that, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, let's stop talking with this guy. You know, with the European Union, we're like $100 billion down. Because we had stupid politicians doing stupid things, right? A hundred, think of $100 billion. By the way, we're really, I've always said 71 billion, but Mexico, we're 130 billion. That's a real number because nobody includes the VAT tax. Nobody even knows what a VAT tax is, but Mexico charges a 16% VAT tax. So nobody ever talks about it. You know, they do it. That deal was bad the day they made it because they had a tax and we didn't. So they have a 16% VAT tax. Nobody ever talks about it, but I talk about it. So we're either going to renegotiate NAFTA, and I said, we won't put the tariffs on Mexico and Canada. And Canada's brutal. Canada's really tough. They, you know, we have a big deficit with Canada too. They send in timber. They send in steel. They send in a lot of things. But our farmers in Wisconsin are not treated well when we want to send things to them. Hey, and I, I don't blame them. Why should I blame them? Because they've just outsmarted our politicians for decades. And I don't mean Obama, I mean all of them. Since Bush the first, and that includes, I mean, that includes a lot of territory. Frankly, Ronald Reagan. 
You remember, I didn't love his, I thought he was great. I loved his style, his attitude. He was a great cheerleader for our, you know, for the country, but not great on the trade. For many, many years, they've been outsmarting. You know, we used to be a nation of tariffs. When other countries would come to the United States, they had to pay for the privilege of taking our product, of taking our jobs. They had to pay. They wanted to come in and sell their product. They had to pay. Today, in China, they sell a car to us. They pay two. hundred billion dollars a year. It's no good. But we're changing it, and it takes a little while. I'm there a year, a little more than a year. We're changing it. We have to. We have a trade deficit. We have a trade deficit with all countries of the world. Listen to this number. If there and we just can't pass. I said, well, what's the problem? Well, reform, because we're doing a lot of reforming. I said, look, people don't know what reform means, neither do I. People want tax cuts. They don't know. They don't know. They want tax cuts.